friends, welcome back to English with Kayla. My name is Kayla, I'm an American English teacher, and today I'm going to teach you all about the English clothing vocabulary that you have never heard of. Now keep in mind, I'm an American English teacher, I'm from the United States, and these are words that we use as native English speakers to describe very specific types of clothes. The reason I wanna teach you these words today is because you will not find these words in a textbook, but if you're shopping and you're into fashion, you might need to know these words. First, in this picture, this woman is wearing a hat. You could just call that a hat. That is completely acceptable. But to be a bit more specific when it's cold out, we can call that a stocking hat. Or you can also say a stocking cap. Cap and hat mean the same thing. The type of scarf she's wearing is an infinity scarf. The reason it's called an infinity scarf is because the scarf is sewn together like a circle. I'm sure you've seen these scarves before and they look like the infinity sign. So in English, we call them an infinity scarf. I really like infinity scarves. I think they keep you very warm and they are very fashionable. Sometimes in English, our winter coat, we refer to as a parka. If it's really heavy, that is what we call a parka. This type of winter jacket is called a puffer jacket. I've seen these on clothing companies websites, they call them a puffer jacket, and it makes sense because they're so puffy to wear. Now you need to know these next two English words. If you're dressing up, if you have a very fancy winter coat, if you're not from a cold climate, you may have never seen this type of coat before. This is called a pea coat. I have no idea why it's called a pea coat, but when it has the buttons on both sides and it's made of wool or that thick material, it's called a pea coat. Sometimes you'll hear people just call this type of jacket a wool coat or a wool jacket. Typically, a coat is heavier than a jacket, but the two words can be interchanged in English. This next type of jacket has been super popular the last few years, and most stores in the United States refer to this type of jacket as a Sherpa jacket. The Sherpa jacket is the fake type of fur. It's really fuzzy and warm. We call that a Sherpa jacket. They're very on trend right now. This type of jacket is called a windbreaker. It's a funny word in English because it's like it, it breaks the wind. You only use this jacket if it's windy out and not super cold. So you could wear it in the spring or in the fall when it's windy. And again, windbreakers have been very on trend lately. They have been very popular and they are considered fashionable. This type of jacket is a jean jacket. Jean jackets are also popular in the United States. They are always fun to wear when it's not super hot out, but they won't keep you very warm. Sometimes we just say denim jacket because the material that jeans and this jacket are made out of is called denim. Now here is a bonus vocabulary word that you probably won't learn from many people. When you wear a jean jacket, with jeans, so jeans on top and jeans on the bottom. A funny joke we like to say is that's a Canadian tuxedo. Look it up. When you have a dressier type of shirt that maybe has buttons, it's not just a t-shirt made out of cotton, we call that type of shirt a blouse. The type of shirt that I had to include today because I'm wearing it is called a flannel. This warm, fuzzy material is called flannel, and flannel typically has plaid on it. So these are all flannels in this picture. You could say flannel shirts, but we just shorten it to just saying flannel or flannels if there's more than one. When men are dressing up, they typically wear pants that are called slacks. The type of pants in this picture are slacks, and then usually slacks have a belt loop. We call the place where you put a belt on your pants a belt loop. These are all obviously skirts, and I'm sure you've heard this word if you've been studying English for a long time, skirts. The skirt that I wanna point out is a pleated skirt. Pleated skirts are really popular right now in American fashion. Pleats are the lines that are sewn into fabric. So, so sometimes pants have pleats in them. And this skirt that I wanted to point out is called a pleated skirt. Now I talked about the Canadian tuxedo because Americans like to make fun of Canadians because they're our neighbor to the north. And this is an actual tuxedo. 
It's what you would wear to a formal dress event. And sometimes we shorten the word tuxedo to tux, tux. We usually just say, are you going to wear a tux to the wedding? That's short for tuxedo. Now you've heard the word dress before. A dress can describe many different types of dresses. A very formal dress like the one in this picture is usually referred to as a gown. So if you watch award shows with a bunch of celebrities, they all wear gowns to the event. Gowns are really formal, fancy dresses. You have probably heard the word jeans before. We've been talking about jean jackets or denim jackets already. And I wanna teach you about different types of jeans. So right now, it's super popular to wear mom jeans. And the defining feature of mom jeans is that they go up really high. And this is for women, by the way, if you didn't already know. So these are called mom jeans. You don't have to be a mom to wear mom jeans. These are called bootcut jeans. Bootcut jeans are not thin around your ankles and you can usually wear boots with bootcut jeans. I think bootcut jeans are the most popular for men. Another thing that's making its way back into style in the United States are flares, or also called bell bottoms. They're called bell bottoms because they look like a bell at the bottom. And if you didn't know, in the United States, bell bottoms were really popular in the 1970s, and they're becoming popular again. So you can call these type of pants flares, or bell bottoms. These types of shoes are called chucks because the basketball player Chuck Taylor is the original person that wore them many, many years ago. So that's slang for these types of shoes. These types of shoes are made by Converse. Let's go over some of the vocabulary for the shoe because I wanna make sure that you know these words that are less common to English learners. First, we have the lace of the shoe. The string in the shoe is called the lace. Next is the tongue. The tongue is the part of the shoe that you pull up and that covers the front of your foot. The bottom of the shoe that covers the bottom of your foot is called the sole, the sole of the shoe. You can also talk about the bottom of your foot being the sole of your foot. And of course, this is spelled differently than the other type of soul, like your personality, like your soul. And then to talk about the front of the shoe, you talk about the toe. You have a toe on your body and you have the toe on your shoe. These types of shoes are called tennis shoes but they have a ton of other words that are used in the United States. It really depends on the person and it depends on where they're from in the United States as to what they call these types of shoes. I call these types of shoes tennis shoes. It's also acceptable to call these shoes sneakers. Some people even call these trainers. And sometimes if they're specifically my shoes for running, I wear the shoes when I go out for a run, I'll call them my running shoes. If I'm not a runner, but I'm a walker, I'll say my walking shoes. They're the shoes that are the most comfortable for walking. Or if I'm not a runner and I'm not a walker, but I like to go to the gym and exercise, I will call these my workout shoes. It's just the shoes that I wear specifically for that activity. These are all common and they are all acceptable words to call these shoes in the United States. These shoes, you can refer to them as heels. When you spell heels, H-E-E-L-S, it refers to the back of your foot, your heel. Now these shoes have such a tall heel that we call them heels. Heels is short for high heels. So you can either say high heels or heels. High heels specifically refer to shoes with a very high heel. A less common word, but an important one to know is a pump. Sometimes we call these types of shoes pumps. It's slang. I think this was more common many years ago, but it's still used once in a while today. And again, if they're very high shoes, we can call them stilettos, stilettos. When you have this type of sneaker that goes up very high on your ankle, Sometimes we refer to them as high tops, high tops. And these high tops are Jordans. If you have a pair of Air Jordan shoes made by Nike, you call them Jordans. Jordans are very popular in the United States. They can be very expensive if they are 
a limited edition shoe. And a fun fact that I'll tell you also for this vocabulary lesson is people who are really into sneakers and collecting Jordans are called sneakerheads. These shoes are called hiking boots. Again, just like the running shoes, you call the specific type of boots that you use for the hiking or whatever activity you're doing, hiking boots, or in this case, work boots. These are boots that you would wear to a job like construction. Now, of course, I know you've all been waiting for it. Not really, but this is important, so pay attention. We're going to be talking about sock vocabulary. These socks are called stockings. When they're very warm and they're like a knitted material, we call them stockings. At Christmas, we hang stockings over our fireplace and we get gifts inside of our stockings. Next, I wanted to point out that these socks are mismatched. We call them mismatched socks. When two items are a pair but they don't go together, we say they're mismatched. They're not the right ones. I often have mismatched socks, if I'm being honest. I'm not very good at keeping my socks together in a pair. These socks are called dress socks. They're for wearing with slacks, wearing to work or formal events so that your socks look nice with your shoes. And these socks that come up high on your leg and they're white, they're called tube socks. Socks that are low, like these ones, are called ankle socks. And this vocabulary would be really helpful in a store if you're looking for a specific pair of socks that you need to wear maybe to work or for working out or whatever. At least you'll now have the vocabulary for the type of socks that you need. These are called tights. Tights are what women wear sometimes with dresses if they need to cover their legs. And sometimes when they don't come all the way up like pants, we call them pantyhose. I hear older women say pantyhose to refer to these, but more commonly now we say tights. I hope that you guys enjoyed this vocabulary lesson today on clothing vocabulary that you wouldn't learn in a textbook, but that is really important to know and can be really helpful when you're shopping in American stores or you're shopping online or trying to understand what native speakers are asking you for. I hope that you'll subscribe to my channel. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in the next lesson. Goodbye.